Welcome to the Setting the Sudoku video. My name is Peter Venus and my Discord name is Piotr V. I'm going to talk you through my story of the discovery of the Miracle Square. If you want to discover the Miracle Square yourself, then please pause the video because of spoiler alert. I created this video because somebody wondered about something. How on earth, Peter, did you discover that there is only one, ignoring isomorphs, there is only one way of filling in a miracle square? That is some discovery. Well, Simon, I'm going to tell that and more. So without further ado, let's get cracking. So basically the journey started like this. I saw the rule set of this Sudoku of Andy Peterson, which I thought was intriguing. It had this rule of all possible X's and V's are given, while there was none shown on the grid. I've seen an anti-crop key Sudoku before and thought, wouldn't it be cool if I combined both anti-crop key and anti-XV? I paused the video of Andy Peterson and only watched it back like recently. Sorry mate. I went immediately to my real life notepad and wrote down the following. As you can see, I wrote down all possible restrictions regarding access, fees, black crop key, white crop key. I almost forgot that four can't be next to one, but I managed to get them all. And with this, I went to F puzzles. So with this rule set that I created for myself, my first thought was, okay, I'm going to fill in this whole grid. And immediately I thought like, okay, the four is the most restricted one. So I put in the four somewhere randomly and was thinking like looking at my own scribbles and thought like, oh, there can only be a seven and nine next to it. And I was really disappointed because this immediately uh, felt like, okay, I can't put in the whole grid with this rule set because although this can be a four, um, it has to be in a corner, then these, one of these two must be a four, and then you have to put in a four somewhere like here, and it's not in a corner, so it can't work. And yeah, so immediately I was, yeah, in, an, in a disappointing stage. But anyways, I... Despite the disappointment, I wanted to continue to see if I can at least, with this rule set, fill in one box. So I filled in the 7 and the 9. Uh, in the middle, I saw directly that it was, um, yeah, it was, it was restricted. You can't put in a 1 because of the 9. You can't put a 3 because of the 7. You can't put a 4 because it's already there. You can't put a 6 because of the 7. And you can't put an 8 uh, because both the 7 and the 9 and 7 and 9 are also in the grid. So the only possible way was with a 2 and a 5. And I was like 95% convinced that it had to be a 5 and that's because of the magic square uh, the magic square has the 5 in the middle and yeah I was like if this is possible it has to be with the 5 so I went home with the 5 and placed randomly somewhere the 2 and was immediately struck like okay but next to the two, I can't put a one, three or an eight. Um, and I can only put a six next to it. So, okay, not putting there in on an edge, but putting it in a corner. And therefore I was like, oh, 
but then I can't put the six in there because of the five. So I was again disappointed, like, oh, this is not going to work. So yeah, this is a nice idea, but I can throw it in the bin. But despite that, I knew I had another possibility. So I explored it um, and I explored the two. Um, and the two immediately, uh, well, the eight is restricted now. The eight can't be next to a seven. It can't be next to the two. It can't be next to the two and it can't be next to the nine. So the eight had to be there. Then we had the, um, uh, the one and the three, they can't be next to the two and the one can't be next to the nine. So it had to go there and the three had to go next to the nine. And then I was like, oh, I can't put a six here. And I was disappointed again, but I was stupid, of course, because here you can put the five and here you can put the six. And I was immediately in a state of, oh, but wait, this is, this is brilliant. This is, this is a discovery. And, th and also I was immediately like, this has to be seen because it is, uh, it is a nice discovery. And there, there's only one way to have this grid filled, uh, or at least this box filled. Um, the, uh, not of course with the isomorphs. The isomorph is the four can be here, 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 or here. And also it can be, uh, so there are four possible ways of rotation. And there are, are also two possible ways of reflection, of mirroring. And therefore two times four is eight different possibilities. And I had to look it up. Uh, how the magic square really worked um, and there I discovered there are eight possible ways and basically did this miracle square work similarly with the magic square but yeah I really thought like oh this is cool this has to be seen and but now I have to make a puzzle out of it because otherwise it will never be seen Now, before I go, I'm going to explain uh, how I have set the rest of the puzzle. I'm going to tell more about exploration. So, personally, the exploration part is my favorite part. And, yeah, the, the exploration of getting here was, was really nice. And I also love other explorations. This looked like it was done in 30 minutes and basically it was. But I do a lot of explorations and a lot of explorations, many hours of them goes right into the bin. This one obviously didn't because this one was published and it was featured by Simon, so uh, that's that's cool. But a lot of them uh, don't go there. They even don't become a, uh, a Sudoku or another puzzle. So yeah, what I do in those explorations, I'm looking for extremities. So the extremity in this was that I wanted a grid fully uh, filled with uh, anti XV, anti crop key. And um, besides extremity, I'm looking for tension. So I have a nice example where I can explain this extremity and tension. So I have this uh, serendipity Sudoku, which I created together with Aspartacus. I was uh, I was mostly exploring it um, and I created this double digit arrow and this double digit arrow means that this is the tens digit this is the unit digit 
this is the tens digit, etc. And basically, what is in the arrow uh, should sum up to this bill. The extremity part, I wanted to make this arrow as long as possible. So, as you can see, I did quite a good job. Um, but even then, I'm still asking, like, oh, can't it be even longer? On the other hand, the puzzle must be, um, yeah, basically solvable. So what you look for is tension. So this long arrow makes it that this must be big, but this small arrow is keeping it low. So there you have the tension and yeah, basically because of this tension, this is solvable because otherwise this would never have been solvable at all. So back to the miracle square story. Next to these scribbles, I wrote down now the miracle square and it had to be discovered. So I went to my friends uh, on Discord and I said to Scott Strozal, like, hey, I've got a discovery. I went to Garford and said, hey, check this out. I put it on the submission channel. And I went to Aspartacus saying, hey, take a look at this. I went to my Dutch friend Prime Weasel. And I went to Pantera and I got her fooled because she thought it was a magic square, which it wasn't, of course. But then I put it on Logic Masters Germany and I thought it was really a discovery, but they only gave it a 68 approval rating. And but my friends gave it real good feedback. They, they said like, oh, this is really a nice discovery. So I was really like, why did I only get 68% approval rating? So I asked for feedback uh, on Logic Masters Germany itself, uh, on people on Discord. And they said it felt like bifurcating, like trial and error. And I said, well, but it isn't because there's a logical solve to it. So I went on Logic Masters Germany and I said, bifurcation is not needed. And I also said, I will share the logical path in a hidden comment. So I did. And after that, uh, my rating went up, so I'm glad with that. Um, and yeah, it definitely helped uh, people um, with the discovery of the Miracle Square. But I was also like, okay, maybe this Miracle Square alone is not enough. Um, so yeah, I needed a real Sudoku around it. And this was my first try. Um, uh, I didn't publish this. <laughs> it was solvable, um, but it, it is an ugly puzzle. So you can recognize here is a miracle square, here is a miracle square, and here is a miracle square. But there are so many clues in this grid that um, you can solve the puzzle without noticing there are miracle squares in it. And that was not my intention. My intention was, look, there's a discovery of a miracle square. So I needed to do something different. So I needed a new idea uh, for implementing my miracle squares because I was not happy with the 
previous result uh, it did end up into a softball puzzle but in my opinion it was not good enough to publish so I went on I scrapped the whole idea of getting the negative constraint on the whole grid and I was looking for other things so another thing I was looking for was I, I was highlighting this as yellow I remember and that came into the the eventual puzzle uh, then I thought like okay I want to have this miracle square here and this as a magic square so it looked like uh, all went well uh, so this a 2, this a 5, so it, now it was suddenly very convenient that this was a, a 2 in the center and this was a 5 in the center and then because of this 5 the 5 couldn't be here so this should automatically go there and 7 is opposite of the 5 so the 6 and 9 are opposite of each other uh, on the other edges and um, because of this 9 the 9 can't be here so the 9 should be there and opposite of the 9 is always the 1 in the magic square so opposite of the fa uh, on the other edges are 3 and 7 so far it seems okay then we have uh, for example if you put in here a 1 and here a 9 uh, the 9 should have on the sides 2 and 4 and the 1 should have 6 and 8 then you should see a problem and the problem is where do I put my 174 and you can't because here you have the 1 and on this side you have the 4 so a miracle square opposite to a magic square is simply impossible and then I was disappointed again <laughs> so but I didn't stop there um, I said well okay get get rid of all this stuff uh, get rid of this stuff uh, I knew of course you can't have two miracle squares uh, next to each other because these are always two and they will see each other so my next step was to have the miracle squares like this and this you might recognize because this uh, did get to the eventual puzzle these are of course two we know that already and then I thought like okay I have to get somehow a um, yeah um, a solvable way of getting there but my tension was I want the miracle squares to be figured out not uh, immediately or no better said I don't want everything to be figured out first and then that you without discovering the miracle square uh, that you can solve it so I didn't want uh, people to bypass the logic of the miracle square let's put it that way I need a constraint and I chose for the XV constraint and basically 
I was lying in bed. <laughs> um, that's always the, the, the most usual time when uh, IDs pop up. And while lying in bed, I was thinking about this. This, this was my start. And this was also the eye catcher. Uh, you should immediately drawn to this part. Because of these tools, uh, or uh, let's put it another way, in the fees there can only be one, one, two, threes, and fours, and you immediately see because of these tools, this must be a two, this must be a three, and this must be a one, four pair. So I was like, okay, that's nice, but that doesn't solve anything <laughs> yet. And then it's just trial and error, figuring out, okay, where should I put my X's? Where should I put my fees? Um, and the next step I believe was here, was this one. Um, well, you immediately see, of course, this is a 7. And because of this 7, you know the 7 should be here. And you also know because of this 3, the 3 should be here. But the 3 can't be next to the 7. So the 7 can't be here. So we either have the 3 here. And the 7 here, or the 3 here, and the 7 here. So let's put those in. And then you yeah, basically know um, how this miracle square works. So this should be... Uh, five, six, nine. Uh, no. Oh yeah, that's also immediately because of this three. Opposite of the three is the one, and because of this one, this can't be a nine. So this must be a six, and this must be a one. The 4 can't be here, so the 4 must go here, and the 8 must go there. And because of this 9, you already see immediately this one goes there. And this is a 5, 6, 8. Now this was already a good start. And what I also like about this is you can immediately go further. The 7 can't go here. And what's also nice is this 1, 4 is very powerful. We know because of this 1, 4, there can't be a 1, 7, 4 in this place. So the 7 must go here. And the 7 goes opposite with the 5. So we have a 6, 9. And you immediately see this 9. It's making this a 6 and this a 9. Here a 1 can't go there. But we already knew that. So the 1 must go here. Together with the 4. Uh, no, not with the 4. Sorry, not with the 4, with the 3. Also not with the 3, sorry, with the 8, sorry. Here goes the 3, 4. And because of this 3, 4, you immediately know this is a 1, 
this is a 4. So this one four was really powerful in here. The seven helped as well to get this here. And that triggered me to get this fee in here as well. Because of this fee, you see as well this two, it can't be a two three. So it must be a one four. And because of this 1-4, we know this can't be 1-4, because then it clashes with this. So we know this must be a 7, this must be a 4, must be a 1, must be an 8, must be a 3, must be a 5. So as you can see already with four little clues, we have figured out uh, this middle miracle square. So I fast forwarded a bit and as you can see I put in this one, this one and these two. These four axes. Now it's not like okay uh, after I put in my first four clues that I was like oh now I put in these four four clues it's a process so it's a process of putting in a clue solving it putting in the next clue solving it going back because your clue doesn't work etc etc so now you see a solved grid or partially solved and that's what we do basically we solve our own puzzles um, and you need to do that because you need to understand your own puzzle. So what we see here is a partially solved Sudoku and it has deadly patterns. So you see a lot of pairs which are not resolved and we come to this final stage where we need to put in clues that are solving your deadly patterns. So basically, uh, because of this rule set, we have access and fees. Um, I was looking for, okay, how can I resolve this? So I was looking at, um, okay, in, in, there's this column seven and nine, which are very interesting. Also row seven and row, nine are interesting but i looked at column seven and nine looking at okay um well uh, a fee and an x can't be in here of course because of the miracle square the fee uh, but the four can't be next um or can't have a fee or an x because they don't add up to it also this one can't be this one can't be this one can't be and this one can't be so the only one that can be is this one. And now I'm putting in uh, the, the one can be uh, two or four this way or this way. Uh, apparently I chose this way. Don't ask me why. So this is going to do a lot of damage. So we know this is a four of course. One and four equals five. This must be an eight. We know now these can't be eight. These can't be four. And because we know here's an eight, this can't be nine. Because the, here's a four, this can't be six. And these sixes and nines do a lot of damage. So this six sees this one. This nine sees this one. This five sees this one. This seven. And as you can see, this, this solves a lot of stuff. Uh, this must be a one. This must be a seven then. 
and this must be the four. Uh, three, five, seven, five. Um, let me see. My scanning is not my best quality. Uh, this is a nine. This is a four. This is a six. This is a nine. Now I came with this at the end, and I was very proud that with only one simple clue, I could solve all of these pairs. So that was really nice. The only thing was I was handed over with this last that deadly pattern. And that's why I was searching. I didn't spot this one back then, but this could be a 4-6, for example. Uh, but I did spot this one. I put in there an X clue. And therefore, we have this solve Sudoku. So this is how I set my puzzle. Uh, there are many ways, of course, and um, let me get you through some takeaways. So, my key takeaways. Explore the extremities and look for tension, what I explained earlier. Explore by trying some stuff out. Uh, you, you need to place some, something somewhere and, and then stuff will happen. You will face disappointments uh, again and again. You will throw away a lot of ideas. And setting is a process of going back and forth. So it will take a lot of time. Share your ideas within the community. Uh, the community is really willing to help you out and ask for useful feedback. So, um, yeah, you must be open for uh, criticism because that will make you a better setter. So, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And I would say... Bye for now.